giving you perfectly portable AI. Thank you very much. Have a great week, and it's great to be here in Berlin. All right. Thank you, Mark. Uh, now, I think I promised uh, some AI demos earlier. We've actually got two of them to show you. Um, the first one is going to demonstrate GPUs in a public cloud environment, and the second is going to show off FPGAs using Cyborg in a private cloud environment. So to kick off the first scenario, I'm happy to welcome up the OpenStack Nova PTL, Melanie Witt, and a man who wears many hats in the OpenStack community, including OpenStack Ansible PTL. He also happens to be the vice chairman of the OpenStack Technical Committee, Mohammed Nasser. Come on up. So um, I think everyone has mostly seen the slide here yesterday. And we talked a lot about the transformation of OpenStack um, with all the new infrastructure use cases that are coming up. Um, and today we saw a lot of really interesting use cases um, and a really cool demo by AT&T that really falls into a lot of these new uh, use case scenarios, um, such as you know, using uh, OpenStack for NFV. Um, but today what we want to also uh, talk a bit more is one of those uh, other unique use cases which is um, AI and machine learning. Um, but to kind of give a little bit of intro, uh, we wanted to maybe start by uh, talking a bit more about the project that is involved in uh, helping make this happen. OK, so Mohammed has told us about how OpenStack as a whole has been evolving with emerging use cases. And I want to zoom in and tell you a little bit about Nova and how it fits into all of this. Nova is responsible for compute. It is the service that provides the REST API and components for provisioning servers. Nova has a lot of cool features that enable interesting use cases in AI and ML. For example, the PCI pass-through feature enables OpenStack clouds to offer special compute resources like GPUs. So using the REST API, you can request GPU resources, and Nova will locate a cloud host that could provide the required GPU and pass it through to your server. Mohammed and I wrote a speech recognition program to demonstrate how you can leverage the power of GPUs in an OpenStack public cloud, and we're excited to show it to you today. We ran the program on a video clip of one of our favorite community members, Tim Bell, and we've added something extra to it for those of you who can read German. We get around 1 billion collisions every second. So each beam has bunches around 100 billion protons. They pass through each other at the experiments. And then out of that, we then get simultaneous collisions occurring inside the experiments. And this is one of the things that's driving the computing needs, which is that we have to be able to handle all those collisions and then separate them out into separate, different, and distinct collisions. Cool. So I just kind of wanted to uh, reiterate on what we just saw. So um, what we just saw is actually uh, a small tidbit of uh, Tim speaking at one of the past OpenStack uh, summits. And what we did is we took that audio and we fed it into um, an open source uh, algorithm called Deep Speech, which was based on uh, a paper written by Beidou on how to do uh, speech recognition. So this Mozilla implementation is all open source and available for anyone to use. And it uses the GPU acceleration in the public cloud in order to do this uh, much faster. After that, we actually fed that data into uh, a project called Jamspell, which is another open source project. And that one actually did a spell correction in order to make the uh, text more accurate, because speech recognition sometimes might make some typos, just like we do. Um, and then after that, we took that and fed that into a translation API, which provided the German translation, which hopefully uh, did a pretty OK job. Um, so again, this is possible to run on any OpenStack deployments um, as long as uh, there's GPU. Um, but what we wanted to focus is really how much faster is this. So here we see kind of this uh, small graph where we have all the different timings of uh, what, just, uh, what we just saw. And we have a comparison of the GPUs uh, versus the CPU. And the one to kind of really look at is the real, which is kind of real time and how much time actually uh, happened in order to execute this script. And we see that it's actually twice as fast um, on a GPU rather than uh, a CPU. 
But it's much more interesting to actually see that in, in uh, perspective when we run both at the same time. So the one at the top is actually running on the GPUs, and the one on the bottom is running on CPU only with no GPU acceleration. And as we kind of watch it go, we'll notice that at the start it probably catches up. You know, they're somewhat close by, but then the GPUs really start uh, speeding up, and and you can really start seeing how much faster GPUs help to accelerate these uh, very unique workloads that involve uh, a lot of you know very unique processing requirements. And so we've showed you how much faster the program runs on GPUs, but you can even try this out for yourself. We've shared the code on GitHub. And you can run it on any OpenStack cloud with GPUs with the same, using the same APIs. You can with OpenStack, you can avoid vendor lock-in, which brings a lot of cool benefits. You can have a multiple cloud strategy. You can bring your own hardware if you want. You can burst to public clouds while maintaining a private cloud. And all of this is easy to do because it uses all of the same AP cloud APIs for all of it. So we've showed you something cool that you can do with GPUs on a public OpenStack cloud. And coming up next, we have another exciting demo using FPGAs on a private OpenStack cloud from Ji Peng Huang and Mark Collier. Thank you, everyone. Wow. That was, that was incredible. I don't know if you all realize what they just did, but I believe they just turned Tim Bell into a German, which uh, <laughs> I didn't know was possible. Hopefully, it doesn't cause an international incident. But uh, let's, let's kick it over here to hear about our next demo. So take it away. Thank you, Mark. Um, guten Tag. Uh, actually, the previous GPU demo uh, brings about an interesting phenomenon that has been uh, all, all over the industry is the accelerators. Accelerators such as a VGA, GPU, uh, MP card, uh, SmartNix with the ARM SOC on it, ASIC chips. For example, Huawei just released our uh, AI ASIC chip uh, Ascend. So all these types of accelerators are being used more and more to support applications like uh, AI, uh, edge computing, MEC, and HPC, uh, stuff like that. However, there is a, a present a significant gap between this infrastructure change and the management software. Uh, if you want to build a truly end-to-end -end system to support your service, uh, you have to fulfill this gap. So Cyborg is a very new uh, OpenStack official project that we have spearheading uh, for uh, just a year and so. And, uh, Cyborg is a general management framework for all these accelerators. So next, I'm going to uh, walk you through a very simple demo uh, of how you can use FP FPGA in a cloud environment uh, to accelerate a video recognition task. Okay. All right, video recognition. That sounds cool. Let's see it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Tell us how so, it's going to work. <laughs> yeah, I will just lay out, uh, lay out the setup for you first. So the hardware. The demo runs on, uh, relies on the Open Labs infrastructure. So we have the Intel Xeon CPU and Intel Area 10 FPGA. On the software side, of course, we are using OpenStack. In order to do that, so the first step is to use Glance um, to upload your FPGA image. It's the same as the virtual machine image. Uh, just one caveat, you need to be careful with the metadata to describe it uh, correctly so that you won't uh, con uh, be confused with the virtual machine one. So as you can see, this is our FPGA image, B-Stream, resident for Obama. Sorry, did you say Obama? Yeah. OK. Wow. Wait for it. And you can see we successfully uploaded. Um, so step two, uh, you can use the cyborg command to show all the accelerators, the hardware you have that you can program and use with. And as you can see, we have the FPGA card now programmable and from uh, Intel FPGA. OK. The most uh, exciting step, step three. Um, with Rocket Release, Cyborg uh, provide the functionality of FPGA programming. 
And now with the formal steps of uh, getting UID for your image as well as the device, you can now program the FPGA uh, with the desired bitstream you want to use. Uh, rest than for Obama, of course. And uh, after all this cloud environment uh, done, uh, in this demo, we are using OpenVINO, uh, one of the deep learning toolkit open source by Intel as well, uh, to, uh, for the uh, inference engine uh, to do the model serving. So uh, we're going to use OpenVINO uh, for serving. And uh, just for a background, the same vi uh, video we are using is a uh, John Podesta, uh, former chief of staff of President Clinton, walking with President Obama around the time of uh, 2014, May. Okay, so Podesta is walking with Obama in 2014. Yeah. yeah. Right, let's let's see, see what the AI can learn from that. Yeah, let's see what happened. Let's see the demo video. Yeah, let's roll it. As you can see, when Podesta whisper, whisper something, uh, President Obama's emotion is quite complicated. Uh, <laughs> many times anger. So he whispers in his ear, and suddenly he's like, we don't know what he says, yeah. but he seems a little upset. Yeah, I guess it might uh, be the midterm that year. <laughs> uh, Got but some I, bad news. Yeah, but I bet the uh, president is much more happier this year with this year's <laughs> result. OK, so with FPGA uh, acceleration, you can have almost twice the frame rate without FPGA, and uh, also cheaper price uh, than using GPU, of course. The model we are using here is actually three models, one for head pose, one for facial, and one for emotion. Uh, all of them uh, retrained on SqueezeNet, which is a lightweight model uh, designed for the mobile device. OK, let's get back to the slide. Do you think this is cool? <laughs> <laughs> now, Please remember, we only use one of the Cyborg Rocky functionalities. If you think this is pretty cool, you won't see nothing yet. <laughs> and of course, this amount of amazing work could not be done without a great community as any other OpenStack projects. Uh, we are very proud to have such uh, contributors with diverse culture background, with diverse, from diverse company, company that killing each other on the market that those people are working together, collabor collaborating in OpenStack. I want to shout out to the Chinese developers, especially for the late meetings uh, <laughs> every week. Thank you, thank you. to all the contributors. <laughs> and thank you so, to, to you as well, Howard. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was fantastic. All right, I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, next up, to give out the Super User Award for this summit, is Jared Baker and a good friend of mine who happens to be having a birthday today, Allison Price. Come on out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thanks. For four years, we've been recognizing super users with the awards at the, at the birthday.